Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. And it took a really long time, but I finally watched the remake of Last House on the Left. Did I like it? Did I hate it? Let's find out today on Hack the Movies. It's time to Hack the Movies. Hi everyone, Sick Tony here, uh, just with a brief announcement. The Freddy vs. Jason episode was copyright claimed, and I tried to use the YouTube editor to trim out the three seconds they claimed, and it deleted more than half the video. Uh, so I re-uploaded it this Saturday, uh, this past Saturday, uh, so it is back up now. If you didn't get a chance to watch it and you missed the re-upload, go, go back and watch it. It's, it's a really good episode. If you want to re-watch it, you can now. The conversation is pretty much the same. I just swapped out some video for stills. And uh, yeah, I was really relying on that one doing super well. And it was doing super well. Uh, yeah. I need these episodes to do well so I can afford to do cool things. Like go to conventions that are far away. Like Spookala, which I went to recently. So yeah, go back and uh, check out that episode. Uh, it's a good time. Now on to the Last House on the Left episode. Oh my God, Kaylee's back. Ah, I'm here. Yay. Oh my God, hello, how are you? I'm wonderful, how are you? I'm doing great. Now, Last House on the Left. Oh boy. You have a whole review of it. I sure do. You do. Uh, I like the original Last House on the Left. I love it, it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It's, it's, it's a good one, it's a good one. I got my autograph there. From the girl who played Sadie in the original. I met the whole cast when I was like 14 mm -hmm. uh, at Chiller Theater. That's so cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it was, by the way, the early 2000s were a great time to be a horror fan. Because all these films were being released on DVD for the first time. Yeah. And you could just go to your local Best Buy and pick them up. Like, you didn't, like before you had to go to like a video store that wasn't a big chain. And, like, you could finally go and buy all this stuff. So I was, like, buying all these, like, older films that I heard about. And I'm like, Wes Craven's Last House on the Left. I'm like, I gotta see that. Um, yeah, and I would, like, dive down the rabbit hole. They all came with special features. So I learned a lot about this movie. Like, the intestines just being condoms and stuff. Absolutely. I felt very similarly. Yeah. So what do you, what, what, when did you discover the original and why do you like it so much? So the original Last House on the Left, the first time that I saw it, I went to a video store that had rentals and the owner was kind of eccentric instead of walking around like in a blockbuster where you could, mm. you know, walk down the aisles and pick whatever movie you wanted to watch. All of the movies were back behind the counter and oh. he just had a book of all the movies. Oh, like this? Like this. It was <laughs> in my very I, real store? I feel very nostalgic right now. <laughs> uh, but he was super knowledgeable about movies. So he used to suggest things for me to watch. And so okay. he, at one day I was like, I want to watch some horror. And he was like, last house on the left it is. Um, and so it was amazing. I, I very, very, very much remember that first watch. Mm -hmm. I was way too young to be watching this movie. Um, yeah. and it was great. Yeah. Uh, the very famous, infamous movie, I guess. Uh, it was more violent than a lot of people were used to. People tried to get a boycott it, uh, or band. They tried, they, they had a great trailer with, uh, just remind yourself it's only a movie. Only a movie. Only. And of course, late 2000 or early to late 2000s, we were remaking everything. Texas Chainsaw remade, Halloween remade. Um, however, when I heard they were remaking Last House on the Left, I was actually okay with it because I had just seen the Hills Have Eyes remake. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that one more than the original. I don't know that I would go that far. I because the original is a little too Texas Chainsaw for me. Okay. And how the remake kind of reworks it to where, like, they're all, like, fucking mutated and whatnot. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's a different enough for me to be like, okay, this is different. So me not hating the Hills Have Eyes remake, I'm like, okay, maybe Last House I'll on the check left. out Last House on the Left. Because I, I love the original Last House on the Left. It's great. But it's one of those movies you could polish with a remake. You could. There's I love the original. I know, I know. But would you have the wacky cops? Absolutely. So I mean, I would too, but if you wanted to. Would I have the wacky soundtrack? Absolutely. <laughs> Those are the things that make this movie this movie. That's true. That's true. But I could see how you could redo this movie. Yeah. It still retain a lot of the horror elements, but change it enough. 
again, I was excited for it. Yeah. And the trailer came out. It had a really good trailer where they did that slow. It's, anno- it's an annoying trope now. But they did, like, the slow version of Sweet Child of Mine, mm-hmm. which I thought was cool. And I'm like, okay. I'm all in. Yeah. I'm all in on this. Uh, and then my girlfriend at the time went to the theater to see it without me. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. And then, like, I didn't want to see the movie or anything, but whatever. Uh, she went without me. And then she calls me, and I'm like, she was telling me about the movie. She's like, that was the scariest thing I've ever seen. I never want to watch that again. A good review. Uh huh. Yeah, it was a good review. I'm like, she was like, I was horrified. And I went, I'm like, yeah, so how is that uh, penis biting scene? Because that's like the coolest part of the original. And that's one that you could update and actually show the thing being ripped off. And I was like, can't wait to hear how they one up that. And she goes, there was none. And again, 2009, I was on the phone. I went, oh, oh, well, I'm just never going to watch that movie. What's the fucking (laughs) point? (laughs) It's like never... I'm like they didn't even the dick biting is the most important scene of this movie. They didn't even attempt it, and I'm like, oh, then there's no value in this film at all. It has no merit, and I will never watch it. And then we were trying to think of movies to review, and I saw you did Last House on the Left. I'm like, well, I don't want her to repeat that. I guess I'll finally watch Last House on the Left, 2009, because I've owned it for like five or six years now. It's the time. I think I might even have another copy of it. I don't know why I had two copies of a movie I never wanted to watch. And I finally watched it the other night, and I have things to say. Well, first off, we got to shout out the director, some guy. I didn't. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I couldn't pronounce his name if I even tried. Hold on. Oh, wait, no. His I can pronounce. I was confusing him with someone. Dennis. No, maybe I can't pronounce it. Dennis Iliadis. That was a good try. I'm impressed. I tried my best. I think that that was correct, actually. I tried my best. Um, But that's okay. You might not be familiar with the director. But it was written by some people. Again, nothing really on IMDb jumped out at me. Yeah. And it's starring actors who got more famous later on. I think this Breaking Bad had been on for one season, maybe, so far. I don't, you know, I don't know when that started, actually, now that I think about it. Sarah Paxton had been doing some cool stuff, though. Yeah, I didn't realize she's married to Zach Kreger from Mighty Skizzy Now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because I looked that up. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know who she was. Did this come out before or after The Innkeepers, which she was also in? That I don't remember. I, don't I didn't look that into that. Um, but uh, she was doing some pretty cool stuff in horror. Yeah. I think she's great. And then Ricky Holdom, Garfunkel and Oats Girl is there. Yeah, she is. The hot one. And her boobs are also there. And her boobs are on there, which I appreciated. So did I. Multiple times. Yeah, I know. Um, Good boobs also. <laughs> I was not disappointed. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so Aaron Paul, uh, Ricky is in there. The kid from Gladiator who's still acting, but for some <laughs> reason is not coming back as his character in Gladiator yeah. 2. I'm sorry. Are you going to be okay? It's just weird because, yeah. like, he's still like a pretty decent sized actor. He's still yeah. in big things. Why wouldn't you have him return as his character? I don't know. Hopefully, what I think they went, "Will you be in Gladiator 2? And he went, "Why is there a Gladiator two? No, that's what I hope. I doubt it. Um, but yeah, he's in this. Who played the dad? I have no idea what his name is. And of course, we all know the dad. By name, it's on the top of our heads. Garrett Dillahunt, who was on that show Raising Hope. And he was also in 12 Years a Slave and Deadwood. So, yeah, he was in things. He He did. The leader of the evil crew there. Uh, The only other actors I can think of is um, the the mom, Monica Potter. Yep. She's in a bunch of stuff. She's in 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 Con Air. She sure was. Con Air. She sure was in Con Air. And the girl's friend was in Super Bad, and oh, I haven't seen her yeah. in anything. She still acts, but I haven't seen her in anything since. I knew I recognized her. Yeah, when I saw her, I'm like, I'm like, I know that girl. I'm like, wow, that girl didn't. Really, I mean, she had a career, but I'm like, she wasn't really a list after that. No, but I'm like, oh, I had no idea she was in this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I. 
I, I like I said, I took a while for me to see this. When did you see this one? So it took me a while to see this also. But most of the reason that it took me a while to see it is because I was like, well, you can't make it as brutal as the first one. There's so many things that happen in the first one, like rape scene wise. Okay, yeah, that. I was gonna say violence wise, this violence is the height wise. of like Saul. So we're in the torture porn genre, yeah. so this fits in. This is this it definitely is more violent, but I was like, there are, there is commentary that is happening in the original yeah. that can't possibly occur in the remake. Just because of the times. I was wrong, largely, minus dick biting. Um, But I was overall wrong. And so I had waited a couple of years to see it. I didn't see it in theaters. Mm -hmm. I want to say I just rented it at, you know, Blockbuster or wherever the hell it was. Um, Is that where I got this? Yeah, Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. Feels like (laughs) those were the days. Um, And, yeah, I just... I remember not liking it very much. I remember Mm -hmm. being like, well, what the hell is this? Is this even Last House on the Left? I, I, there's a lot of people who love this one. Upon my next watch, so when I yeah. rewatched it for this, I love it. I, okay, uh, good. I, yeah, my opinion has been changed. I had a great time watching it. Yeah, and um, I think I think uh, Wes Craven's son helped produce it, so I yeah. think that might have helped a little yeah. bit. Uh, but yeah, let's just go through this film. Absolutely. So it begins with the prisoner being transferred, Krug. Not Krug. I'm Krug. bad at that. I'm going to call him by the wrong name. I was shocked they didn't change his name for the remake. It's, they kept all the names, except they don't call the one guy Weasel. But They don't call... So, no, they, they changed all the names. It's they Weasel. Did? Yeah, Weasel becomes Francis. Um, well, Weasel wasn't his real name. I thought maybe his name was Francis oh, in the maybe. original. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I mean, unless he had parents who hated him and called him fucking Weasel. <laughs> There's only certain I animals think- you could be named after. Like, Fox, that's a cool animal. Dove, wolf. I guess, for a girl. Wolf, yeah. But it's just like, hey, meerkat. It's like, no, that's not, that's, that's fucking, that's lame. My yeah. parents hate me. My parents hated me. Um, <laughs> but uh, Phyllis becomes Paige. That's a real one. Okay. But I think the family, because I think it's Sadie in both of them. Sadie is, is in both girl. of them. And then uh, Junior becomes Justin, but maybe Justin's yeah. name was. Well, Kruger, I thought they would change just because. Yeah. Because f- at the time of the original, Freddy Kruger was not a thing. Yeah. Uh, but since then, I thought they were like, well, obviously, they're going to swap out his name. Yep. They're going to call him Wes or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, he's being tri- uh, transferred uh, by two cops. And I guess his crew knew exactly where they were going to be and knew that they would be at the train and break him out of jail or break him out of his prison thing. Yeah, I, That part seems a little convoluted there. I don't understand the beginning sequence. So well, I think in the original, they never even say how they escaped jail, no, right? they just say that they're escaped. And mm. not only that, but it happens really quick in the original. So in mm. the original, we just get the snippet news article or the news story um, while they're driving in the car. Yeah. Um, in this one, it takes a long time. It's yeah. a cool kill. It's a cool scene. Yeah. The cool stuff is happening, but I like the quick pacing of the original compared mm. to this one, which yeah. I feel like is a little bit dragged out because basically we have this car crash Sadie runs up and I don't know any other names because I just want to call them <laughs> Weasel and Junior um, and you know they all run up and they're here to help Krug yeah and um, yeah it, it doesn't make it they, they murder the one guy pretty slowly uh, I really like Sadie in this one I do too because Sadie was just kind of like a whatever girlfriend and it's just the bad guy's girlfriend in the original she does have her moment where she's pretty vicious but here she's like really into this yeah. like she's almost like the most into this even more than Krug she definitely in the original I feel like she plays off this like kind of feminist flair so yeah. she in the original is like she's like I want more girls added to my girl gang and that's kind of like <laughs> what she's doing and why she's doing everything mm-hmm. and she has this devotion to Krug and in this one she just has a devotion to Krug so much that she becomes more evil than him yes. just like what you're saying yes she's really gung-ho about a lot of this yeah uh whereas Justin you know the son he like much Although in the original, he's pretty drugged up. The whole idea in the original yeah. is that Krug drugs him starting as a child so mm. that he becomes compliant to whatever Krug wants. Yeah, him to whereas do. in this, it doesn't. I mean, obviously he's doing drugs, but it's not. Yeah, it's a little bizarre. I'm like, why is he so into this? I don't understand why he is so devoted to Krug. And that was kind of my criticism of the remake is Mm. in the original, everybody has their reason for doing what they're doing. And I'm sorry, in the original, everybody has the reason for doing what they're doing. And in the remake, 
that is not the case at all. Everybody is just for some reason devoted to Krug. No. Why doesn't Justin break away? Why doesn't you know? I would have like maybe there was something sprinkled in there that I missed, but he almost seems like he might be like kind of like a cultish leader. Like he's kind of not like a super cult, but like he's just starting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the Justin thing, him not being on drugs, it's just like I need it because you sure you can manipulate your kids into doing a lot of stuff, but like once you go to jail and they're separated from that, I feel like you kinda you could kind of snap out of it unless those two just did I feel like you could have gotten away from those two. Yeah. And he did not. No, for no. For reasons unknown. They have that cool skeleton mask and yeah. I thought that was gonna be like a bigger part I of it. Too. But it kind of goes away. Yeah. But I do like again, they have to show like how vicious they are. They like fucking show the picture of the guy's kids as they're killing him. Yeah. That's brutal. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Because, again, this is, like, a very kind of realistic type horror. Like, I guess it could be a slasher, but it's more re realistic. Yeah. Uh, so it's cool that it's, the movie takes you to those uncomfortable places that you don't usually... Because a lot of times slashers like, oh, it's wacky and funny, yeah. which isn't how they start. They always end up there. Uh, but, yeah, they they save Krug, and they're, they're back in business. Yahoo. And then we meet our happy family. What did you say the girl's name was? Paige? No, so no. she's still Mary. Her oh, she's still is, Mary. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So Mary in both movies. Yeah, Mary, uh, who's really good at swimming. This comes up later. Important this, plot point. This is an important plot point. Uh, she's good at holding her breath for a long time. Again, this comes up later. Uh, she's really good at swimming. Uh, the mom is there. Their dad is a doctor. And they're all going on vacation. Does he say last house on the left in the movie? He says it in the trailer. Making the turn now. It's the last house on the left, in case you forgot. It is the only house for miles, Dad. Oh my God, I don't know. When he I was says he says that the bathroom is the last door on the right. Ugh. I remember that, but I don't remember if he ever says last house on the left. Because I remember I saw them in the car going to the place, yeah. and I I was waiting for the line. Maybe I missed it, but I know in the trailer he goes, "Remember, it's the last house on the left." Mm -hmm. Because Last House on the Left doesn't really make sense in the original. Why did no. I, I forget what the point of that name was. They just kind of threw it on. No, I think they just threw it on. Yeah, because it's like, okay, well, I mean, they're in a house. Yeah. I don't know if it's the last house. Yeah. I don't know what side of the street it's on, but this sure. This one definitely gave a little bit more explanation to that because they said at the end of the drive yeah. was a lake or something. Yes. So it had to be the last house. It had house. to be the last house. And we keep seeing it on the left-hand side, so. Sure, I guess. <laughs> But it's not even the last house because it's a guest house. So it should be last houses before the lake. That should have been the title of the film. They're very charmed, that family. The last house also with a guest house at the lake. By the way, the lake ends in the road. We made a sign for it. That should have been the title of this film. What did you see last night? Well, I saw the <laughs> last. <laughs> but yeah, they go there and they set up that the microwave is broken. Also an employer. I, I can't wait to talk about that. I, I know, me too. Apparently my friend Cecil from Good Bad Flicks, that's like his favorite part of this movie. It's a great... The uh, microwave yeah. being broken is very important. It's very important, and you know, it feels like it might be added, but... You know what's not important, though? What? The setup for the microwave being broken, do you remember what it is? The brother. Yeah, okay, so the... The, the, mom, the, mom's, has... the mom has a brother, yeah. and he has come to the cabin, to yes. their lake house to the last house on the left. Yes. And he stayed there, and so he broke the microwave, and that's the plot point with him. Yes. Why do I need that setup? I don't know. That has I, nothing to do with anything. Honestly, the scene that they lead up to is really stupid and probably shouldn't have been in the movie, so I would have cut all of that out. That's It's too long. It's yeah, too it's, long. it's want, a long way to get there. Yeah, why? And the, again, the reaction at the end is me going, what? Yeah. Anyway. Um, here they don't full out say, they, I don't think we ever learned what actually happens, but there is a dead kid. They had a son, I believe yes. who died. And we see a little hint of that. We see like the little boat. Um, and I think, uh, the daughter has like a necklace and stuff and they kind of dance around it. There's a little bit of dialogue here and there, but we're not sure how he died. We The only thing I think we ever end up finding out is that he died about a year ago. I kind of like this edition, because I don't think this is in the original. Yeah. Because uh, it, it, it it's just more motivation for them to, like, really want to get back. They don't want to lose another kid. Yeah. So I could see, like, having already lost a kid and then seeing another one in danger will just be like, okay, we got to do everything we can to stop this from happening. That's actually a really good point. Yes. I had not thought of that. 
Yes, I uh, I really like that addition there. And in addition to that, they had to give the brother, uh, her brother, Mary's brother, backstory. Yeah, because they needed to explain the necklace. Yes. And so in the original, the necklace is a peace sign, which makes no sense in 2000. And they were just hippies. Yeah. 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 So uh, she gets a necklace with her brother's name on it that he has is memorializing his death. Yes. Um, they also make sure to show her like showering and dressing for a really long time. Yeah. I feel like that was intentional. No boobs. Yeah, no boobs. Uh, I feel like they were just like hey, we want you to look at her body and be real into it, so then you feel really guilty about later on when she's undressed again. I'm like, ah! I'm like, I pre that's evil, but I appreciate it, because, yeah, it did make me feel uncomfortable later on that yeah. you had this really, like, hot shower scene. I'm like, ah, I don't like this. I don't like this. That also kind of weirded me out, that shower scene. So the shower scene is maybe, like, 15 minutes into the movie. We get all this yeah. backstory, and then we get the shower scene. And the original Last House on the Left, that actually starts with the shower scene. So yeah. I was like, clearly we're given a little bit of a head nod, so why the hell did I have to deal with all that damn backstory? Yes. And again, there was some cool stuff in the backstory, mm -hmm. but I could have done without it. Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, the, my one issue with the shower scene is uh, she doesn't dry herself. Yeah. Oh, it drove me insane. It drove me nuts! Wet. I was like, who gets dressed? Why would you ever get dressed when you are that soaking wet? Yeah, like very wet. She wasn't in a rush. No. <laughs> it wasn't like she was just in a rush and was out the door. That made no sense. Yeah, it really bothered me. I completely agree. I was going insane over that. Yeah, but she wants to go see her friend uh, Paige. Yes. Originally uh, Phyllis. Originally Phyllis. I guess yeah, I guess 2009. Is not Here's a common this hot name. girl, yeah. Phyllis. Yeah. Oh, baby. I feel bad. If you're a girl, if you're one of my 3.6% female audience and your name's Phyllis, I'm sorry. I'm sure you're very attractive. Um, 3.6. Not counting, I feel like the few guys have girlfriends who watch the show, so it's probably closer to like 3.8%. I was going to say, maybe even 3.7, but you know. I went up to 8. I went up to 8. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I do like that the, the mom is a little worried about her going out. Yeah. So again, it must have been like some kind of accident. Yeah. I'm guessing like a car accident or something. Like she's afraid like, to have her daughter not be supervised, even though her daughter's like old enough to kind of go out on her own. Uh, but the dad seems more alert. He's like, go. Yeah. Go take the keys, you, have fun. You're a teenager, go enjoy your life. Yeah. Have fun. Shut up, Monica Potter. Yeah. You were in Patch Adams. We don't Shut even up. care about you. <laughs> Let our daughter go out and have fun. Why, why, why should we all be sad? Uh, I do appreciate that it also shows them, like, trying to get over what happened. A lot of times in these movies, the person lingers a little too much. Yeah. Which, sure, can happen. But when every movie shows the family member trying not, like... Yeah. It's it can, like, it's cool, it like, be oh, a little bit too much. They're in the process of trying to get over this death. Mm -hmm. Which makes what's about to happen so much fucking worse. So much worse. But okay. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, Paige is the super bad girl. She mentions the dead brother briefly. She's the worst. So here's the thing about yeah. Paige, especially Paige versus Phyllis. Yeah. In the original Last House on the Left, they have two very char different character roles. Mm -hmm. So you get Mary, who is more innocent. She's burgeoning into her womanhood. Yeah. She's kind of this blossom flower. She's very chaste. She's very... And then you have Phyllis, who is the badass bitch from the other side of the tracks, and, you know, that is important. And so we get yeah. these two very different characterizations of these two girls. In Last House on the Left, the remake, I feel like they get a little bit interchangeable. So you just called her bad. I don't know that she is. I, no, 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 I, I think, I don't mean, like, she's, like, bad because of, like, her morals and stuff. She's just a fucking idiot. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. In that case, we agree. In That's what I meant. Okay, I'm yeah. like, oh, you're, like, actually stupid. Yeah, she's and stupid. fucked in the head like anyone could have done. It's fine if you want to smoke and get laid, but, like, what the fuck? You walked right into this fucking trap, you yeah. idiot. Yeah. Not to victim play, but there's sometimes where you're just like, well, what the fuck? Like, I would never in 100 years have gone into that thing. No. No. Uh, I which, especially would not have. Yeah. As, like, a woman who existed in this time period, yeah. things that I would not do is get myself into this situation. Yeah. And again, it's... It was a real easy situation to avoid, yeah. too. Like, it wasn't even like, oh, my God. Because yeah. I think in the original, they bump into Junior. Yes. And he invites them back to their yeah. apartment. 
to get like weed or whatnot. Yeah. So Junior has the Which is also to- stupid, but they were like, well, if he's just right there, it'll just be in and out. But this one, they have to like fucking drive Gladiator Kid to the fucking uh, hotel. I'm like, all right, there's too many steps in this plan. No, I'm not doing this. Also, does she just leave her job? Yeah, what the hell? She just leaves her job. She's like working in a convenience store where she is the only employee working and selling beer for $5.25. Yeah. Good God, I miss those days. Yeah. Um, and and then she just, she's like, oh. oh. You're bragging about getting beer in a convenience store. We haven't been able to do that in I until know, like recently. Ever. Recently. Oh, you can and do it, it now? Not everywhere. I had no idea. I assumed that I still had to go to the beer store. Yeah, if you want to buy multiple cases, yes. Got they it. put a limit on it. Uh, not every place has them. So, like, the Super Wawa's, once in a while you'll find one that does. My local one doesn't. Doesn't. You still have to go to a bar. Mm. There's, like, weird-ass rules. I hate it. You know, when I first moved, I lived in Pittsburgh. Yeah. When I first moved to Pittsburgh, I had been bartending in New York for Mm -hmm. years, for, like, ten years. I moved to Pittsburgh, and somebody came in, and they were like, hey, uh, can I have a six-pack to go? And I was like, no, you cannot have a six-pack to go. That's incredibly illegal. Why would you ever do that? And then, like, a week later, I found out that that's just how you buy beer here. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's very illegal in New York. Yes. Now it's not because yeah. of, you know, all the COVID stuff. But Yes. You know. uh, it's pretty funny that the, the first Shazam movie. Yeah. Because they're in Philly. Yeah. Most unbelievable thing in that movie was not the talking caterpillar or the weird gods or the magical lightning. It was that they just walked into beer. a store and just bought beer yeah. casually. Yeah. And I'm like, what? That's not real. That's not how that works. Now that little boy's going to say a magic word and turn into a magic man. Yeah. <laughs> that I can believe. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so they decide to go back to Gladiator Kids. He's just Gladiator Kid, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I respect uh, he's, They're going to go back to his fucking... Hotel, hotel. and he's like shady as shit. It's not even like he's like charming and nice. Like, don't get me wrong, a girl could be tricked by a handsome looking man, yeah. but not like a handsome looking man who's like, Ugh. Yeah, he's no Ted Bundy. Yeah, yeah, who wasn't even really that handsome? Yeah, but he was charming, apparently. Yeah, you know, it's all about confidence. It's all about confidence. And Justin really. or Gladiator yeah. Kid has none of that. He has none of it. Like, like, look, like a handsome man again can trick you, but if the handsome man's like, uh, can I have. Like, can no. you not card me? The girl's going to be like, who the fuck is this loser? Unbelievable. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the the girl's just like, I'm going to go in there. I'll be right back. And it's like, obviously, she's not coming yeah, back. Why and, would she come back? And then fucking Mary, again, who I want to say is the smart one, but she's like, I guess I'll walk in there. Like, no, don't go in the hotel. What? Are, I would knock. No. Uh, look, I I'm, would not do anything. No. I, the setup is given to us. You know, I, it, mm-hmm. a lot of the time you can ruin any of these good older movies yeah. by putting a cell phone into them. So they do give the setup of her cell phone doesn't have service here. Yeah, but that was a little convenient. Yeah. There's there's a few really convenient things yeah. that take me out of the realism. So that's why she has to go over to the hotel room. No. That's no. why she, cl- whatever, she's an idiot. No, too. I'm sorry. I'm going to the office. Yeah. I'm going to get My a tele, I'm going to get a telephone. And it's a call back to Freddy's dead. She, and we'd be like, hey, cops, a uh, girl, my friend went into a room. She hasn't come out. She's not answering. Uh, come over here and check it out. She passes by a, um, a newspaper a, clip. In a newspaper. No, no oh. doesn't she pass by? She passes by like the maid. Yes. When she's walking to the room. Why not ask the maid to help her? Well, uh, the maid probably can't just like walk in. I mean, the maid can knock on the door with that's her. That's true. She could knock. She could knock. That's what maids do. I woke up at hotels many times in the last couple of weeks, and let me tell you, the maids always dang knock. Yeah. So yeah, they uh, they just walk in like she just walks in like an idiot. Yep. And nothing bad is happening. They're just partying. Yeah. Whereas in the original, it's like right away. Yeah. They lock the door and they're like, oh, uh, yeah, we should have yep. saw this coming. Yep. Should have saw this coming. Um. Yeah. So then they're like, let's party with Gladiator Kid and dance on the bed. I'm like, oh, that's that. Is that what I missed out on? All those years of not doing drugs in college, I could have been dancing on a bed. It was so cool. It was. It looked like it was really cool. They it were having like, a blast. They were having a ball of a time. Yes. Uh, but yeah, um, turns out the family comes home. Now, as much as I'm shitting on uh, Paige, a Paige, f- a fucking gladiator kid, he's responsible for everything that's about to happen. Because like, unlike the original where I think they wanted victims. Yeah. That's not the case this time. Yeah. They're like, we need to get the fuck out of town. Yeah. We got to lay low. Yeah. Why would he invite them back? 
So the I guess the setup sort of is that Gladiator Kid is just bringing them over because he wants friends. Yeah. And then the family comes home, and that's when the turn of events happens. Yeah. But what the fuck, dude? You know your family's all fucked up. Why yeah. would you? Why would you ever put anybody else into danger like that? It was so stupid. It was so stupid. I thought maybe they like won it victims, but yeah. they don't. Yeah. They're really annoyed with him bringing them home. Yeah. Except for Carfunkel and Oates. Oates, who's just like, well, tits out. I'm yeah. like, I'm not sure what the point of that was. I'm not complaining about yeah. it. I'm not sure what the point of that was. Um, but yeah, and the dad's just like, well, we can't let them go. It's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. At uh, that point, why not let them go? Just say, get out of here, children. Yeah, I don't think they know anything about them. Like, hey, it was nice for you to stop by. We got to hit the road. Yeah. Bye, ladies. Yeah. That's the easy solution to this. It's not like the girls are like, you are on the news. Like they don't know who they are. They miss the newspaper thing. Like you you can get miles away before those girls ever piece it together. And they probably won't piece it together. Because they're both idiots. They're, they are kind of stupid, especially uh, Paige. Yeah. She would have seen it on TV and be like, oh, I saw four I people who look just like them. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I like Paige tries to just run away real quick. She does. <laughs> she does not do a good job trying to run away. No. And of course, the police are just out, right outside conveniently. She's like, Banging, banging on the on window, the but they can't hear shit. It was pretty brutal. Aaron Paul just slamming her head on the the oh, yeah. sink. That was pretty that, rough. That is probably the scene that sold me on this movie. Yeah. So I'm like watching this movie going along, especially on this rewatch that I just did of it. Mm-hmm. Watching the movie, I'm like, all right, man, this kind of sucks. I don't know if I'm going to be sold on this. And then you get this shot where Aaron Paul bashes yeah. her head on the sink in the bathroom, and the sound again goes a little bit weird. Yeah. And like, that's a great shot, man. That's yeah. so cool. And like I said, I I really like Sadie in this. She's yeah. like fucking like she's like ready to kill yep. these girls. She's like looking for. Whereas Krug is like, nah, shit. Yeah. I don't really feel like dealing with this. Sadie's like, oh, I'm all on board yeah. on this one. <laughs> My notes autocorrect it, Mary, because she spells it weird, to Matilda. Oh. That's so, a yeah, whole different movie. So the magical Matilda girl yeah. is flying and it crashes into the thing. Uh, yeah, Mary causes an accident after being very helpful. Because she, like, lets them know where to go and everything. And Sadie's like, thank you for being co op Sadie looks like... Sadie feels like an alien that's trying to be a human and not doing it well. She's like, you are very cooperative. Thank you so much. Don't you think that Mary is pretty neat? (laughs) I don't know, Krug. I think Mary here has some potential you should consider. And also, oxygen is what we all breathe, right? (laughs) Right? And they're like, why'd you say that last part? (laughs) I love being on Earth. Okay. So does everybody, right? (laughs) I don't have to say it, but, you know. Yeah, but no, uh, fucking Mary burns her on the head with the the lighter and causes an accident mm-hmm. and runs out into the woods. Um, oh, yeah, and we forgot to mention she's using her family's car. So they stole the family's car. I like the lighter burning scene. Yeah. Because that immediately after that happens, Sadie goes, oh, no, this is going to scar. Like, she's so vain about it. And I like the idea of, like, this evil, hardened criminal caring about her appearance. Well, is she vain or is she like, fuck, it's going to be really hard to be incognito if I got a fucking burn on my head. Oh, an interesting point. That could be the thing. It's like, well, look out for this lady. She's got a burn on her forehead. She could also just have bangs. Also, she has... I mean, they're okay tits, and she shows them off a lot. So if you see a girl with a bird on her head who's boobs are out. showing her boobs, who's not in a strip club, probably where you that's probably would her. see that. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, that's where I would hide. We're like, have you seen a girl who likes to be naked and is scarred? It's like, yeah, you know, the strip club's down yeah, the street. Every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Paige managed to get away pretty quick, because Mary doesn't. They, they managed to hold Mary down, but Paige, I think, hits him with a rock or something. They get away real easily, yeah. but they can never stay away. Uh, they grab her and then they take her top off. Yeah. 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 Okay, I have a problem with this scene. Go on. Okay, you're about to show me some horrifying imagery. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but they do a good angle on Paige. I'm like, man, those tits look great. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to think about that right now. I don't want to think about that right now. They, I got to say. Use a less flattering angle, please. They do a very good job of making both her and Sarah Paxton look really beautiful in really hor- horrible, horrible moments. Yeah. Movie. And I'm like, oh. Well, no, Sarah Paxton in this scene coming up, it's not, like, sexy at all. I don't know that I agree with you. <laughs> her butt. I like how her really. butt looks in that shot. I don't know. But the, the thing with Paige on the ground, I'm like, man, that's a very flattering shot, but you don't yeah. usually do those types of shot right for this kind of scene. That's yeah. kind of like an awkward thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Also, you don't actually see her boobs. You just see you her don't, in her bra. You don't. You don't. And nor will you ever. Yes. Trust me. I did a Google search. Yeah. I paused the movie and I'm like, all right, hold on. Well, Let me go ahead. So and so name nude Google search. I'm like, ah, oh, that's a bummer. Not a single one. <laughs> Garfunkel notes naked in a bunch of stuff. Apparently, well, I would be too if I had like that. <laughs> I thought they were perfectly reasonable. Yeah, they're perfectly li- nothing like to write home about. Yeah. But you're not disappointed yeah. in it. This is a very progressive show we do here. Anyway, Krug tries to make Justin pick between the two of them, and he doesn't pick. And then Krug decides to pick uh, poor Mary after they kill Paige. They did. They, 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 him and uh, Weasel, new Weasel, Aaron Paul, stab the shit out of Paige. Yeah. And don't kill her, which is also uncomfortable. So she's alive during a lot of this. Yeah. She gets the stab in the front and she gets stabbed in the back. And yeah. I think that's a pretty cool, like the idea of having her getting stabbed in the back is, is a, yeah. I think it's a nice little touch. Because in the original, I think Sadie is the one who like really rips her apart. Yeah. And they pull her intestines yeah. out and stuff like that. Yeah. They don't go that crazy with no. the gore. It's a little bit dis- the gore in this scene for me, or at least yeah. the gore in Paige's death, is a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I feel like they're leading up to the, you know, epitome yeah. of the movie scene. Yeah, so which perhaps- again, I I am shocked they left this scene in the remake because I a lot can't believe they did. Hollywood likes to shy away from that stuff. Um, probably because if you included every feminist in the world, bitches about it. Yeah. But it's like, well, these are bad it is funny the hypocrisy where it's like well i'll watch a guy murder ten thousand people but if he does any sexual assault then that's a no for me i'm like i mean i mean for me those are both pretty terrible things to happen and they are a bad guy uh yeah so i was fully expecting that to get cut out i'm like no they left it in they made it very uncomfortable as it should be it was very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. sarah paxton did a great job in that scene i i did not think that that scene could be quite as effective as it was in the original. Yeah. And boy, was it. I mean, yeah. I was terrified. It felt real. It felt too up and close, uh, up yeah. close and personal. The only thing I think that it was missing is uh, in the original, you get David Hess, like his spit kind of on yeah. her cheek. Oh, that was gross. Yeah. And that's like another one of those moments where it's like, okay. Like, Krug is being vile and disgusting, and he, you know, in the original, he makes Phyllis piss her pants. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, he's just this dis- gross, disgusting guy, and you don't get quite as much of that in the remake, but you do, yeah. you do still get the being up and close and personal in this horrible scene that mm-hmm. you do not want to see up close. No, no. You're right. They did tone down on a lot of, like, the torture stuff a little bit. Again, which is weird at, since it's the height of the Saw franchise. You yeah. think they'd really go all in on that. But, um, yeah, uh, this is the one. If you're going to do this scene from the original, you have to do it. You have to go yeah. all in uh, without being, like, too gratuitous. Yeah. Again, that's, which what is I, a, I, that's a hard line. Yeah, I think there are... I think we've talked about it before. Like some filmmakers have tried to do scenes like these that miss the intention. Like when we did Psycho, yeah, we talked about like why the shower scene was important. It's like because you are vulnerable, you're like not protected at all, and it adds a level of fear. But then a bunch of hack filmmakers are like, "I'm gonna have my girl in the shower naked, and everyone's gonna go see." Yeah. It's like, well, now you're just doing it to just show boobs and stuff. That's not really. You're not doing it for the same reasons. There are like. There were like a bunch of Italian films that had a bunch of rape scenes in them yeah. that were more just to show off how hot the girl was. And it's like, no, nah, I don't think I think you've missed the point yeah. of what these scenes are. Yeah. Uh, but no, this one, again, very uncomfortable. Goes on for a while. And Effective. Then the, the unrated cut. So it went on. By the way, this plays on TV. Uh, not. Uh, well, that's the thing. I went. Uh, I was helping my sister uh, babysit a while back. You probably hear them walking around upstairs, even though I begged them to not walk right there uh and this was playing like on amc or something it was the very end so so i technically have seen this movie before i've seen the last 10 minutes on mute uh heavily edited but when i remember that i'm like 
What do they do when it gets to this scene on TV? I, they just must not have it. I yeah. I you know what? I'll, maybe if I can find the TV cut, I'll do a TV cut breakdown. Because I'm just sitting there. I'm like, this is a pretty big scene, and it's kind of important. They how reference you, it later in the movie. Too. Yeah, I'm like, how do you cut around this one? Why would you even play this on network TV? It seems like that'd be really hard to do. Uh, and then I remember that night because the movie immediately afterwards was the Nightmare remake, and I went boop. Uh, <laughs> I'm like only one Wes Craven remake for me thank you um, yeah so it's very brutal very rough it is kind of ridiculous that she's able to just get up right away hit him with a log and just run I'm like I feel like I would need to, like there would need to be a recovery point before I could even med like, like I know adrenaline and shit but there's like so again in the original it kind of makes sense so what happens in the original is very mm. slightly different, but it, it actually makes sense. What yeah. happens is she, Mary is, um, Mary right after that scene happens, Mary goes and is vomiting, yeah. and the gang of criminals mm. is kind of like, oh, well, you know, w look at what we just did. Maybe did we take it too far? There's like this <laughs> moment of reflection where it's like, okay, maybe this really was too much. But in this one, she has to fight her way out. Yeah. Well, the original, she just kind of like walks into the water and they yeah. shoot her. Yeah. And this one, she runs to the water. But I'm just, I'm fine with her like getting away, running. I'm like, th when it happens, I'm like, I feel like you'd still be like one really injured and hurt. Yeah. I don't know if you'd be able to just book it that fast yeah. and then also go into your Olympic swimming. I, I, I couldn't do it at all. But, <laughs> but we did establish that she is great at swimming, so... Yeah, but keep in mind, she just went through a car accident. Yeah. She just had the shit kicked out of her. And then that, I'm like, I don't know if she's really... No, she's not ready. Uh, yeah. Um, but whatever, it's a movie. She gets away, they do shoot her. Yes. And they assume that she is dead. Yes. And in the original film, she's dead, but not really. That's a problem with the original film. If you ever watch it, I think you might have mentioned it in your review, like... Mm -hmm. The character is technically not supposed to be dead yeah. for a while. Yep. But then they re-edited it to say that she was dead, which yep. doesn't make sense because when they bring her dead body back, she's still moving. It's like that actress is clearly alive. Yeah. That's one of the mistakes of the original. It that is. You yeah, I would, I would agree with that. It's like, like, it was just too late to come up with that decision that she's dead yeah. at that point. It's like, well, you kind of wrote yourself, like, you don't have the footage to justify this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so she's basically floating. And they think that she's done. And they have to find shelter because a storm that was referenced earlier is rolling into town. Uh, and what do you know it? As luck would have it, they ended up at the same house that Mary was from. Wow. There's been an accident. Which we forgot to mention. This is based off like a very old poem or something. The... Uh, Oh, God. I don't know that I know this. Well, there was a film called The Virgin Spring. Oh, yes. Yeah. But that was based off like an old ballad um, that was about, uh, I forget the name of it, but it was basically these thieves have killed these daughters of this mm. family. And the, the thieves then go to the family's house to seek shelter, but they're wearing the clothes, like the garments Got from it. the daughters, yeah. and they recognize it, and they, they kill them. And then the twist at the end... Keep in mind, this is like the 1600s or whatever, so twist hadn't really been figured out yet. The twist at the end, the dad's like, why did you kill my daughters? And they were like, when I, me and my brothers, when we were young, our parents abandoned us and we became bad guys. And then the dad goes, oh, God, I'm your father. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. But anyway, this is now a retelling of that famous ballad, which has been done a couple times. Yeah. So it's a good twist. I'm surprised more movies and stuff don't use it. Yeah. Cool setup. But yeah, they're like, hey, there's been an accident. Can we hang out? And I would just be like, yeah, you can hang out on the porch. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. letting you fuckers in. <laughs> Maybe the setup of, of the mom's brother in the beginning is yeah. that she's generous with sharing her house. Okay. Maybe. That makes sense. But yeah, they're patching up the dude's nose, which is pretty. They do a lot of extreme close-ups on yeah, that. Good. <laughs> Like that. And I like Aaron Paul freaking out. I was like, ah! <laughs> I like that very, very much. Um, but they're doing a good job of being nice and friendly. I don't think they ever intended to kill this family, obviously. Because remember, they're not they're not trying to do a murder spree in this version. They're trying to just get out of town. Yeah. Make it to the border or something. Uh, so they're doing a good job of being friendly and sociable and nice, which is pretty good. Uh, but of course, Justin is freaked out the whole time. 
and he's the first one to piece it together. Yep. Yes. He sure is. He sees Mary's picture on the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and he goes, oh, shit, that's that girl that we think we just killed. And he has her necklace still. He sure does. He does. He yeah, he ends up, like, throwing up Yeah. because he can't handle the guilt yeah. of it. I think in the original, he was kind of the more sympathetic one. He absolutely was. Yeah. In the original, his character works so much better because you sympathize with him because he is his only motivation in the original is getting a fix. Mm. Every single bad move that he does is because yeah. his father has addicted him to drugs and he needs more drugs. Yeah. And so in the original, you feel really bad for him. You're like, oh, my God, this like he's also a victim to this situation. Mm -hmm. And in this one... Justin is still sympathetic, but again, why the hell did he not just walk away at any of these points? He had so much time to walk away, unless the other two were keeping him around, but they let him off his leash, so he could have ran away easily. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. I guess he could be so racked with guilt, but again, Justin, it's kind of your fault. They didn't tell you to bring fucking girls to the hotel, you yeah. asshole. Um, what a horn dog. Yeah. Yeah. What a coincidence. A bolt of lightning has struck the power transformer and put all the lights out. Amazing. The lack of signal was not enough because they're like, oh, shit, we forgot about landlines. Lightning. I'm like, wow, this, a lot of coincidence is happening today. Um, this was the time of us needing to create a reason that we didn't have those things. Like yes. all of the movies that came out in this era were like, well, this is why you can't use a cell phone right now. Yeah. I feel like you, eventually you can do that where you're like in a cabin in the woods and you're like, well, the Wi-Fi shit. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, internet service providers suck. Yeah. There you go. We wrote around that. Done. Totally reasonable. Like, oh, yeah, my internet service provider is terrible. Yeah. I totally agree with this. Yeah. Um, So Mary, okay, maybe she survived the gunshot. I, I don't know. But she survived being in that cold ass water and then crawling through the water. Like. I feel like she'd be dead. I don't know if she could get that far in She's her state. She's a great state. swimmer. She was a great She's swimmer. She's a really, really good swimmer. I guess they were close. I guess they were close. But she would be full of like hypothermia and whatnot. I feel like her body would have went into shock. She's before not she doing got... good. Yeah, I know. But I feel like she would be in shock long before she got out of that yeah, goddamn probably. water. Um, but she makes it home. Whereas I think in the original, they overhear. They recognize the necklace and they overhear where they left the body. And the, yes parents are like let's go over there instead yep. she makes it home and they actually save her yeah they do that cool like i don't know how i feel about that what the the uh, about her the, them saving her look at least they made up their mind this time that's true at least they they decided early on oh we're going to have her live so and we don't how. so we don't have awkward shots of an actress who's moving around going i can't believe she's dead yeah as she's blinking and shit. Yeah. That confused me so much the first time I saw Last on the Level. I'm like, is she she's not dead though? Why do they keep saying she's dead? <laughs> um, but I like the like the homemade uh surgery they do on yeah. her. That's pretty rough. Yeah. If you're gonna have a doctor for a father figure, yeah, it's good to put that to use. So we get that yeah. both with the sewing of Aaron Paul's nose, and then again yeah. when Mary returns and he is trying to save her from the bullet that's in her back yeah. and whatever. And like other. get the blood out yeah. of her lungs and shit. Yeah. And then he examines her and he's like, oh, Oh no. The bad thing happened. Yeah. But then the mom is the one who pieces together, like, hey, wait a minute, I just found the necklace that she was wearing on her. I think those people are responsible and they don't have a car to get away. But they have a boat, but they don't know where the boat keys are. Do they ever, where do they Very find, convenient. Where do they find the boat keys at some point? There's a lot of running back and forth between the two houses. Yeah. Because it's one of those times. Maybe. Where do they find the boat keys? I don't know that I remember that. Why would you not have a key rack that you put those on? <laughs> I don't remember where the boat keys come from. I've never owned a boat, but doesn't everybody just leave their boat keys in the boat? Isn't that like a thing? I feel like that's a thing. I don't know. I am I have never owned a boat, so. There could be boat thieves. You don't know. I'm sorry. Earlier this month, we had an actual boat captain. Maybe I'll ask her. Where yeah. do you keep your boat? I don't think she wants people to know where her boat keys are now yeah, I think maybe, about yeah. it. <laughs> Speed 2 Cruise Control. Go back and watch that episode. <laughs> Superior, if you ask me. Um, yeah, so while he's looking for the boat keys, uh, Francis shows up. Yep. And he's, like, flirting pretty hardcore, kind of like he did in the original. Because oh, the original, he was kind of like... The original, he was more of, like, a sex pervert than he was a murderer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and the mom is flirting. And again, since it was spoiled, this whole scene, I'm like, well, what's even the fucking point? She's not going to bite his dick off. 
again, if someone came up to me and they said, Tony, you're going to remake Last House on the Left, I would have been like, why? I don't want to do that. But then they then they would show me the check and I'd be like, okay. I'll do it. We need our best fake dick guys in town. Where I need to start looking at fake dicks right and they're like, Tony, you don't want to write the movie first? I'm like, irrelevant. Let's get our best fake dicks. We need the dick scene to be perfect. Like if the, if the movie falls apart, we don't have this scene, guys. <laughs> and I'm sure they'll be like, well, we're not gonna do that scene. I'm like, oh, next you're not gonna want the cops on the chicken yeah. truck? You're gonna tell me that's not there? What do you mean no goofy music with kazoos? <laughs> <laughs> so good. I love it so okay. much. Do you think the two cops in the opening are a reference to the bumbling cops? Yeah, and I think that's stupid because one, mm. I want to see bumbling cops throughout a movie like this. Yeah. Like, I think that it's funny to make fun of the man and we don't make fun yeah. of the man in this one. We just kill the man. <laughs> and that's also lovely, but it just does not have the same effect. Like, the idea of having the bumbling cops, like, fumbling around and not doing anything right any step of the way yeah. and trying to get on It was top to of the break cart, up like, from, like, the horror that we're... Which, it made more sense back then when movies weren't as violent as Last House on yeah. the Left. And you're like, well, how do we counter the violence? To have, let, let's go overly wacky. But yeah, I, you know what? I'm gonna splicing scenes of the wacky cops into scenes from this movie. No! 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 Which, yes. by the way, one of them was the bad guy in Karate Kid. Yeah. And Cobra Kai, which is a show I do not watch. Do you want? I have I, also not seen Cobra Kai. It's not that big in a Karate Kid. Yeah, I. 100% agree and I feel like everybody hates me for that. I know. I'm like I like I, I watched it I as a kid. I didn't see it when I was a kid so I just might not have the same nostalgia. I did but it was more like I mean it's the same director. It's yeah. basically Kid Rocky and I'm like I'd yeah. rather watch just Rocky yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Like I don't hate them Yeah. but people like when Cobra Kai came out people were shocked I wasn't watching. I'm like I don't not I, really I just thing. remember the first yeah. movie really. Yeah. I hear it's good. Yeah. I hear it's good. I've heard great things. I just my sister was just like, yeah, you used to love that movie. I'm like, I'm like, really? Of all the movies I love, <laughs> of all the movies I love, you have this false memory of me being real into Karate Kid? I'm like, it was on. It was on and I watched it. That was it. That's funny. Uh, but yes, uh, the which, by the way, when I met the last house of the... The last house on the left crew, he was at that convention also, That's and he cool. dressed up as a zombie version of his Cobra Kai dude. That's actually really cute, yeah, and I, was, I love it. I was on an elevator with that guy. Yeah. Martin Cove, right? That's yeah, great. cool guy. Anyway. So what I would actually say yeah. about this as a remake, since we're mm. kind of talking about the yeah. idea of it being a remake, and we're talking about the idea of the bumbling cops, I think that where this movie lost me is that it doesn't have the things that make Last House on the la Left Last House on the Left. Okay. So we... I think this would be a great movie, like you were just saying, if it was just a retelling of this poem yeah. or something like that, and it had a different name, I feel like I would give it a lot more credit and I would mm. love it a lot more. Okay. Because we don't have all of the things that I think make, that are like the epitome of this movie. Shots of birds? Yeah. I that was the, that. That's one thing I remember from like the commentary or something, like apparently they were just... I think Wes Craven's, I think it's the last house on the left where they were like, if you don't know how to transition scenes, just like cut to a shot of birds. Yeah, well, in this one, we have that one shot of the tree branches that goes in oh, and out of right, focus. Right, so. right. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's uh, there's like weird audio stuff too in last house. Like I oh, think when definitely. he stabs them, there's like that yeah. sound. Yeah. So yeah, Francis is flirting with the mom. And again, I'm not into it because there's no dick biting scene. I do like when he sees the daughter and he's like, oh, shit. Uh, and she like knocks him over. The I love that he gets pretty like brutalized by both of them and no one is there to help him. I also feel like that's kind of a misstep. So in order to kill him, mm -hmm. both parents are needed. Both the mom and the dad get involved in his murder. Well, I don't think the mom would have handled him one-on-one -on -one in the original. She made him tie his hands behind his back. Well, so. yeah, but I like the idea. Okay, so, like, that's how we, like, reclaim our femininity in this movie <laughs> is, like, we literally emasculate a man by biting off his dick. Yeah. Like, I want to see her kick ass. And I agree. Yeah. She couldn't have taken him. But they should have created a situation where she yeah. could have. Because... I want to well, see her bite his dick off. up behind him, she should have actually stabbed and not hit him with the bottle. Yeah, what the hell was that? She like slit his throat There's or like something. There's like a million knives in that kitchen. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, and they like beat the hell out of him, which I appreciate. Yeah. But then they just 
They do mangle his hand up in the garbage disposal. You couldn't put his dick in the garbage disposal. I do love a good garbage disposal. You couldn't, you couldn't throw him on top. I know it probably doesn't make sense. Maybe he had a really big dick. I don't know. I'm sure Aaron Paul, if they said, hey, we're going to give you like a 20-inch dick, you'd be like, oh, I'm all more. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> Seems a little small if you ask me is what I would As think. long as you're not going to bite it off, I'm in. <laughs> We should look. Maybe the biting was too far. No, it wasn't. That's no, no, no. I mean, for a remake, I could see people being like, "Wait, so this guy killed his daughter, and she's gonna put his dick in his mouth?" That's I, the revenge for the horribleness of them. I get it. I get it. But see, if I was that bad guy, I'm like, "Oh, there's no way this girl wants to blow me. Something's up. Something's and up." He thinks that she likes him. Um, Any time <laughs> that you have a chance to castrate a man in a horror movie, you castrate a man in a horror movie. Like. That is the whole like. That's the point. Can we can we remake this? Yes. But it's like it's just nothing but dicks being. Cut. I was <laughs> like, just gonna say, can it be a one and a half hour long movie of dicks getting cut off? Because <laughs> yes, I am in. I am one hundred percent in. Like the the car accident scene, the guy goes through the windshield and his dick gets cut off by the glass. Like yes. wow, this is like really impractical reasons for why dicks would be cut. I off. I would like to do that, but I would like it to be in like in the Omen with the head spinning <laughs> scene. <laughs> But the dick spinning, I, that's how I would like that scene to go. R.I.P. David Warner. Um, I love The Omen. The Omen is like, it's one of those things where I'm like, that's one of my favorite childhood films. Yeah, me <laughs> I had, too. I had weird childhood films. Um, so yeah, they they kill him, yep. finally. Yep. And they're like, all right, well, <laughs> we got to kill the rest. Yep. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I do like that Junior, I'm sorry, Justin is going to betray them. Like, he has the gun, but he can't bring himself to do it. Yeah. I'm also disappointed in that gun scene, though. So, in the original, yeah. we get the gun scene is Krug telling Junior in the original yeah. and saying, blow your brains out. And yeah. we don't get that same level of control and... Yeah, because he makes his son kill himself when he realized shit hit the fan. Yeah. Because uh, the son wasn't helping... Uh, but in this one, like, Justin's just sitting on the ground, and then they go, and he just gives them the gun. Yeah. He gives them the gun. But, yeah, they, <laughs> like, the dad just immediately shoots the girlfriend right away. And she's like, what the fuck? And she, like, jumps out, tits out, fighting them. Why? You always kill the man first. <laughs> like, I, why would you ever shoot mm. for the girl who is going to be easier to kill? Mm. Always kill the man first. Mm, I don't know. How many women have wronged you in your life? A lot, but... Mm. Compared to men, though, nah. I, mean, I feel like maybe men wronged you more than women. Nah. I mean, yeah, that's accurate. Yeah, you see, it's right. the reverse. Is it, see, if it was the mom, she probably would have killed that guy right away. But like, if you're gonna have to fight these people, you but know the dad was probably like, "It looks like that girl that turned me down." <laughs> 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 and also, I want revenge. <laughs> of course. Uh, but yeah, I think Crook is like thrown out a fucking window during this fight scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Sadie is like. Even with a bullet wound and being half asleep, she's going to fucking town, yeah, beating the is. shit out of him. Yep. She like hulks out. Yeah. She really does. She really, really does. <laughs> uh, but then she gets shot in the eye, mm -hmm. which I'm not a fan of eye no. injuries. Um, but yeah, pretty brutal death for her too. Yeah. Like fucking, I want to like more brain matter in the background. Yeah. I would have liked her to last maybe even longer than Kruger if they changed that up. Because, yeah. again, she was the most, she took the most joy out of being evil yeah. out of all of them. I completely agree. I think her her role and Krug's role almost flipped from the original movie. Yeah. Almost. Almost. Yeah. To a point. Um, also, we forgot to mention, she, like, kind of assists in the rape scene. She's, like, holding her down and everything. She does seem to have another one of those reflective moments once it's over. You know, like, did I go too far here? Yeah. You kind of see her, like, Not as much down, as the original. They didn't yeah. reflect as much as the no, original. far less. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, she definitely participated. Mm -hmm. She is an active participant in all of this. Yeah. Uh, Krug ends up being the shit out of the dad. Uh, sure and I'm does. guessing at this point they're getting the boat ready. Yeah, um, he yeah like, the end the end timeline is a little bit confusing. So yes. like, there's a lot of running back and forth between the carriage house and the main house, mm. and then there's a lot of running back and forth between the boat and the main house. And then yeah. I it's hard. It was hard for me to pay attention to who was where. Yeah, it, it did. Get, it did get a little confusing at yeah. some points. But yeah, he's getting the shit kicked out of him with the fire poker. But then Justin pulls the gun on him. And then you were expecting the blow your brains out scene. Instead, he stabs yeah. uh, Justin. But uh, spoiler, Justin makes it out of this movie. How do you feel about that? I, I, when I, when this was coming out, people really didn't like that they were trying to like 
humanize him and actually gave him a happy ending. Yeah, I I feel like everybody should die always. Um, it's kind of my general. <laughs> I, I like I like the finality. Sorry, this reminds me of like Divine from Pink Flamingos. Kill everyone now! Yes, that's exactly how I feel. I, I Divine is my spirit animal. Um, I I just really, I feel like there's a good finality to that. Mm. And this is yeah. a movie that needs finality because it is disgusting and it yeah. is horrible and it is vile. Look, and I, I get, want it to be final. I get he's not like the mastermind. Yeah. But he's the one who did get these girls oh, yeah. into the thing. I just don't feel like he should be on the boat to safety at the end. I yeah. feel like they should be like, okay, you got to stay the fuck away from us. Yeah, and We're taking our daughter. You stay here. They really just trusted that he was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have been playing them the whole time. Yeah. You know, and, and they just trusted that he was good. I would not trust somebody. If I was in this situation, I was those parents. And I was like, okay, this kid came along with these people. I would be like, well, he is one of those people. Yeah. Not to group everyone together. But yeah. again, he, again, it's all his fault, really. Yeah, it's it really his fault. I mean, it's their fault for being murderers and wanting to kill. But it's his fault for, like, even inviting the girls into that situation. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he... It's fine if he, like... You know, it's kind of like Darth Vader. You know, he, he recognized he's a bad guy. Yes. And he's like, you know what? I have to do the right thing. But he doesn't really get redeemed because he did participate in multiple genocides. So, like, you can do the right thing as a bad guy, but you eventually have to die or go to jail to yeah. make up for what you Your did. Sins. Instead, it's the movie kind of plays it off where he's going to have, like, a happy ending. It's like, no. Yeah. No, you, you're you're a bad guy. I you're imagine that one day him and Mary they get married. It's really <laughs> no, that's never happening. It's really romantic. They no, both, they they are bonding over the fact that they've both lost loved ones. No, they... but it's a little different when your parents <laughs> killed all your loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe she gets frustrated with him. All right, they their marriage end, ends in divorce, I guess. Okay, yeah, <laughs> if it even gets there. Uh, no, these guys are in therapy for, till the end of yeah, time. Oh, are yeah, you kidding 100%. me? Um, but I like the mom like hits him with like the fire extinguisher, yeah. so they all kind of team up on Krug at the end. Uh, but yeah, they um they basically kick the shit out of him, and I think he was dead. It seems like a good place to kill Krug, if you ask me. And then they, they get on the boat, and then they go away. And then we cut to Krug on a table. I can't move. You're paralyzed from the neck down. And his head is in the broken microwave. And then he blows up his head in the microwave. <laughs> When does this happen? I have no idea. That's the same question that I asked myself. But I also don't care at <laughs> all because it is amazing. I love that head explosion. It's beautiful. I, he's on the boat and then magically he's not on the boat and he's exploding heads. Is okay, it a flashback? This, is it a... I don't care. This <laughs> feels so tacked on. Yeah. It totally Was is. this added like late? Because it's in the trailer, by the way. I remember... See, I it, don't remember seeing that. I remember trailer. seeing it in the trailer, and I remember hearing about the microwave scene. But in my mind, I'm like, okay. Again, to keep going back to Saul, probably for this remake, they probably made the parents torture the bad guys yeah. to fit in with the torture porn thing. But they don't. Yeah. They just kind of kill them, yeah. which makes the whole torture thing really weird. Because it's like, did he... Did he take Krug and do all this while his daughter was dying? Or did he go back, I guess, never call the cops so he could finish the job? It's like, dude, you're, you could kill in self-defense, but when you start yeah. staging an elaborate murder, like, yeah. you, you start to get some prison time for that one. It makes no sense in the It timeline. makes no fucking sense. But again, I don't care at all. How you could have done it. Yes, tell me more. I will tell you how to write this movie, okay? How you could have done how it is... How we'll need to end our dick-biting movie, is what I think you're trying <laughs> well, to describe thing. right now. Dick-biting one microwave scene. <laughs> Done. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the, how I would end this movie, and then I'll, we'll swap out one thing for our dick-biting movie. Okay, uh, you have the fight in the kitchen, and you throw his head through the microwave, which you know is broken, or you throw the microwave on top of his head after plugging it. You, there's some... It's the staging of the torture stuff that yeah. takes me out of it because it's like, 
if this is before the boat, then your daughter's dying, and this is too and you've excessive. Taken priority over the yeah. And if this is after the boat, it's like, well, now you're going to get in trouble with the law and everything because you you should have just called the cops and been like, "There's a bloodbath back at yeah. home." And also, I'm like, I don't like the idea that you left Krug alive without really killing him. It's just look, I get it's funny. It's funny to watch out of context. Yeah. And for our dick biting thing, same thing, just his dick falls in the microwave. Yeah, just, of course. Like, yeah. Put the microwave over his dick. And just we're beep, gonna, beep, beep. Yeah, we're going to eat that thing. It's going to uh, be great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the ending. I know people like it. Uh, it's, it's too much. It's too much. I love it. You can end it at the boat, and you got a nice little movie there. It's It also just doesn't fit with the rest of there was No, no it does not fit. There with was it. no goofy. Wa- I feel like they just wanted something for the trailer, to be honest. Also, in what situation ever does a microwave break so that it opens with or so that it works with the door open? I don't know. Like, I, anytime but they that figured a, it out. a microwave breaks, it's like, OK, it doesn't work anymore. Like, yeah. It's not like, oh, my God, this thing is microwave in the whole universe. <laughs> like, so it, it doesn't really make sense. But again, yeah. I, don't, I don't care. <sighs> It's so dumb. Uh, But yeah. Okay. So my final thought. Yes, please. Besides that stupid fucking ending there. I think this works. I think it works. God damn it. I'm going to knock down more stuff. Uh, No, I think it works overall. It's a solid remake. Uh, Sure. I prefer the original more. Uh, The one change I like is them deciding that the daughter is going to be alive. And not doing weird, awkward cutarounds. Yeah. I feel like Justin could have been rewritten a little bit more. I think keep him drug addicted. Yeah. I like the idea of him being in an actual spell. Or just like show us like why he is so yeah. easily manipulated if you're not going to show us the drugs. Yeah. Like that was the weird part. Yeah. Like unless we missed something. I don't think we the did The only though. thing that I can think of is that there is talk about his mother being dead. Okay. And so perhaps the insinuation there is that Krug killed the mother and that how somehow has traumatized him and has made him very devoted to his father. Oh, okay. But that's like, I'm grasping at straws. That's true. And we could have just easily explained any of that. Yeah, just with drugs. Give them drugs. It's that easy. Yeah. If you give people drugs, you can make them do some weird, crazy shit. Yeah. Especially if you are their dealer. Yes. But no, overall, like I think it stays true enough to the original. The the few things it takes from the original, it does really, really well. Yeah. Uh, I like the whole revenge of the family minus the microwave. I like everything else. Uh, yeah, it's solid. Um, I'm shocked the director didn't do, uh, like a lot of big stuff after this. Yeah. I think the movie did well, right? I think it did well financially. I thought that it didn't, but I'm. Let's look it up. Yes, let's. Let's look it up. Uh, box office forty six million. I doubt it costs that much to make. Let me see. Oh yeah, this made money. Budget fifteen million, even with oh, added great. yeah forty six million. Yeah, so I mean it's not like gigantic, yeah. but it did pretty well. And yeah, let me see. The director has gone on to do uh, a movie called Delirium, and another one called He's Out There, but he was credited as someone else apparently. Wait, del- did Delirium come out? With oh, Topher no, Grace no, no, and no. Patricia Clarkson. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that one, the box office here, it's saying, is under $500,000. So I don't think that got a wide release. No, it does not sound like it. And he made some other movie called Plus One. I don't know anything about it. Uh, but yeah, um, I think it's I think it's fine. Yeah. I think it's fine. Like, you could probably, if you don't, if, if you're trying to show a girl some horror movies and they're not like Kaylee who likes weird old cult stuff. Yeah. This is the version that you show them. Yeah. To get them interested in the idea. Uh, like I said, it worked. My ex at the time went and saw it in theaters with her friends, yeah. which I'm sure was supposed to be a fun girls night, but that's not a fun girls night. No, no, no. Neither version of last house on the left is a fun girls night ladies. So maybe don't plan a good viewing party around Probably this. Not. No, uh, but yeah, it's cool to see a young Garfunkel and Oates and yeah. uh, Aaron Paul uh, in a role that you wouldn't normally see him in. I think it's I think it's good. I feel bad that I waited so long to watch it, but it did need that dick biting scene. It really it did. Really did. I just I can't understand why they wouldn't even want to attempt it. Yeah. I, I think that the things that were changed, there are definitely some misses. Again, mm. I would leave in those bumbling cops. I would leave in some wacky music. Um, you know, the, the MIDI orchestra is maybe a little bit too much for me in this. 
Um, I would I would leave in the dick biting scene, mm. obviously. Yeah. Um, and then I would leave in the drug addicted junior. Yeah. Um, and I think that if those things had happened, mm-hmm. this would have been an amazing, outstanding remake. Yeah. I think right now what it is is a great standalone film as mm. long as I don't compare it to the original. Yeah. And actually, the, I forget which review it was because I looked up some reviews and they made a really good point. What I liked about this that stood out from the other remakes at the time, they weren't just putting like flavor of the week, hunky actors in yeah. there. Like this feels like it, they had a vision, they had an idea, they went with it and they committed to it. It wasn't, wasn't like, let's throw Jessica Biel in there. It's Jessica Biel versus Leatherface. Let's put Jordana Brewster against Leatherface. Yeah. It's, um, so yeah, I liked, uh, I liked what they were doing with that. Whereas a lot of other horror remakes I yeah. can't really get into. Cause it's like, we're going to put a hunky person in here and put a bunch of modern songs in. I think that it still questions the line between good and evil. Mm. And, you know, is the idea of the parents getting revenge on these people and them becoming evil when technically they were the good people. Yeah. You know, I think it still puts that into question. I think that's a really important thing in this type of horror. Mm. And I think it's really successfully done in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I say check it out. I it's, would agree. It's a good watch. Watch the unrated version. I don't know how you could cut around some of this <laughs> stuff. Again, I'm going to look up. I'm going to see if we can find the TV cut of this because I'd be very interested to see how this made it to TV. And uh, yes, if I wanted to watch your review of Last House on the Left again, where do I go? Well, you could go on over on YouTube to Once Over with Kaylee. That's Kaylee, C A Y L E Y. Yes. Um, yeah, and like I said, I do like that the Cravens were kind of involved in yeah, this. Yeah, I do too. Uh, we should come back and do Hills Have Eyes at some point. Oh, I'm in for that. I do like that remake. I, I like the remake too, but I, I like the, the original sequel, The sequel to the remake, not so much. Nope, I would agree with that as well. You know, I went to the theater to see that. Why would you do that? No, here's the thing. I went to go to the theater, and we went to the theater, and they had a big poster for the movie. And it had been out for a few days. It wasn't playing at that theater. Did you say, may I have this poster, please? No, I'm just like, because <laughs> we didn't look up showtimes or yeah. anything. And I, I just went. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to see Hills of Ice 2. They're like, oh, that's not playing here. And I like looked over in the lobby to the giant Hills of Ice 2 poster. I'm like, ah. Weird. You know, okay. Seems a little misleading, but all right. <laughs> uh, but yes, check out Kaylee's channel. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Go on Patreon. Go back and watch our Freddy's Dead review. Yeah. Uh, and watch all of that fun stuff, and we will talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. 